Hi, hello, my name is Florence. Welcome back to On the Borderline with Florence, my podcast. Thank you for clicking on this podcast episode or watching this video. Big trigger warning for uh, grief and death in this episode. If any of that makes you uncomfortable, if any of that uh, triggers you, makes you anxious, I know it definitely makes me anxious, then um, please click off. I don't want to trigger anyone. I don't want to bring up any painful memories for anyone. This episode is being created for the people who, like me, are going through grief and I am making this so they don't feel so alone. I wanted to talk about the reality of grief and what it's actually like to experience. I first was confronted with grief when I was, I think, 11 or 12 years old and my grandma passed away. It was very sudden. She had a stroke and she was in hospital. And since I was a child, I believed that things always get better and that it will all be okay and she will definitely uh, recover because there, there was no alternative in my mind. So when she passed away, I was really shocked and it was the first time I realized that oh my god sometimes things just don't get better and you have to prepare for the worst as well. It was a very complicated and difficult time in my life a lot of things going on so I feel like I never really processed that grief properly. There was the next thing coming and the next thing coming so I kind of just pushed it away and didn't really deal with it. And then years later, uh, I was in a group group therapy session. And I don't know how grief came up, but I just started really, really crying and really breaking down over the grief of losing my grandmother that I hadn't really let myself experience before, I guess because I didn't know how. And I realized there was a lot of emotions there. I had a lot of guilt, which I think can happen in grief. I had a lot of guilt for not visiting her enough in the hospital because I thought she's just going to get better. So she's going to come home. And I didn't, I felt like I didn't visit her enough. So I dealt with that guilt for years and years and years. I had a period where I would go out to the graveyard and sit down by her grave and just talk to her. I even read her one of my short stories once. And it brought me comfort, and I ended up receiving a necklace of hers that she wore, and sometimes when I needed comfort, I would just wear it. I never forgot her, and there were many times in my life when I wished she were around to help our family through it, because she was such a, such a good soul and such a kind person, and she loved us so much, and there were times in my life where I really felt like I needed her, and I just, I just wished she was there, and I have wondered throughout my life whether she would be proud of me, what she would think of me now, and little moments like that, especially as time went on and I started growing up. I, I kept her close to my heart through wearing her necklace, and thinking about her and then visiting her grave. And um, I also carried the guilt of not visiting her enough. And recently I, I told my mom of this guilt because a second grief has hit us. And she told me that I'm not remembering it correctly. They, they weren't letting children inside. Like we were so young, like it was really advised that they don't bring me and my brother in to see her because we were just too young. Um, I also had a therapy session a couple months ago where uh, this came up as well, and my therapist advised me to write a letter to my grandmother, what I would say to her now. I wrote the letter, and I, I cried. It was very emotional, but I feel like it helped me process things. So that was my first experience with grief. It was hard, but I I thought, I don't know, I didn't expect grief this time around to hit me with a different force. I don't know. 
um, I felt like you know, I didn't process my feelings. I just was able to push my feelings away and they would come up from time to time, but mostly I was okay. And this time I had no desire to push down any negative or painful feelings regarding this grief because I knew it was important to feel it and I don't think I would have been able to push it down even if I tried because it came with such such force. So I lost my grandfather in July. He went into hospital and he got really ill. We visited him almost every day for as long as he was in there. I think he was in there for two or three weeks. And seeing his health really decline, we knew what was coming. I was very focused on doing everything I could and visiting him as much as possible because I remembered what that guilt had felt like, that guilt of that I hadn't done enough for my grandmother. So I wanted to do it right this time around, and I feel like I did, and I got to say goodbye. And even though we knew what was coming and we knew it looked like he wasn't going to get better, it was still just as painful. Uh, when the call first came, uh, I think we all went into autopilot mode a little bit. Look, that's that's my dog in the background. If you like dogs. So when the call first came, we all went into autopilot mode. I think just like no emotions, just like robotic mode. I, I was working. So I just worked through the day and I was just feeling really all sorts of numb. And we were just focused in on what we need to do, like administration wise and that kind of stuff. And then it would hit me in waves, this pain. And I've never, I felt a lot of different kinds of emotional pain throughout my life. But this was the first time I really felt like my heart is like breaking. It felt like nothing was important. I found it hard to concentrate on my job. And there were days I wished I could just take vacation days. But at the same time, it was good to have something distract me in a way. But I would be working and then it would hit me. Um, the reality, the gravity of losing someone and never being able to see them again. And that the weight of that was so heavy. I have not cried like this this much ever in my life. I take antidepressants. So I I don't really get emotional at movies, at books. Sometimes I find it really hard to cry. It wasn't hard this time around. It was coming. At, I was sobbing. It was usually music that helped me um, bring these emotions up and deal with them. And I did let myself cry as much as I needed. And I, I did listen to those kind of songs about grief because I... I knew that I couldn't keep it down and I didn't want to. I wanted to experience that sadness, which may sound weird, but like like he deserved that we grieve him with this much weight. Like for him, for all the love he gave us, there needs to be sadness and there was sadness and there needed to be place for sadness. I didn't feel the need to pretend to be okay. I didn't feel the need to push those emotions down. I just let I just let them come and I let them wash over me. It felt like nothing mattered and um I was in a fresh relationship at that time and I did neglect my relationship because my sadness and my grief was more important to me than pretending to be okay for a starting relationship. I think when you go through something as huge as grief, everything else in your life feels insignificant somehow. Like your pain and your sadness feels like the biggest thing. And I think maybe that's normal. My ex could feel that I was distant because I have always been the type of person to fall apart alone. I've always been the type of person who deals with hard emotional things by myself. And that's just 
how it is. That's just how I do it. That's just how I've always done it. And I wasn't sharing any of my pain with anyone besides my mother. I, I didn't want to share my pain with anyone else. Nobody understood the depth of my pain, of my grief, of my sadness. And I feel like, I think for a lot of people, it's also scary. Uh, a couple of days after my grandfather died, I, I went to the wedding of a high school friend and I was out smoking and I was just feeling that wave of sadness hit me again. At that time, I was still in autopilot mode and I thought maybe going to the wedding might help distract me. It did for periods of time and then it didn't. But I was out there and I was talking with a friend and um, this friend asked me why I was so sad and I, I said, my, my grandfather passed away three days ago. She immediately went, oh, oh no, I don't even want to hear about that. That's It is triggering. It, it brings up your own fear of losing family members. And I understand that. I understand that completely. But it's still what's happening to me. I did see people... But I would only be able to see people for, for a couple of hours. Most days, um, I felt so weighed down by my sadness and my grief that I didn't feel like I could go out and see people and smile and talk about other things. And I also didn't want to share my pain with anyone else because I process pain alone. That's how I can process it. The only person I knew to share it with is the person who was feeling the same as me, my family. The people who are feeling the same as me, who are going through the same thing as me, those were the only people. My family was the only people who I could share that with and talk about this with. I talked to many people. I friends. Some friends knew what was going on. Some friends I would see and I would be feeling okay, so we would talk about other things and I didn't even mention it. Everyone deals with grief differently. Some people go completely numb. Some people have their hearts break. Some people are so afraid of grief and that even your grief is scary to them because it reminds them that grief and death could come any day and they could have to face it as well any time. And I understand that that's scary. Losing a loved one has always been my biggest fear and now that it's happened I I'm surprised I'm coping this well um there were definitely days when I was barely coping yeah I found it very hard to be in a relationship at that time because the relationship was fresh and I didn't I didn't want to share my emotions with my ex I didn't want to lean on them I I've never leaned on people in times of sadness that's just not it's just not how I process. And my ex could feel that they were not the priority anymore, which was true. My priority became my love for my grandfather who passed away. And thus my priority became grieving him. And I don't regret that. This probably pay played a part in the relationship falling apart. Maybe it fell apart because of this, but I still don't regret that. Because my, my grandfather deserves this much grief. And I am not going to feel less just to, just to make, pe make myself be more fun to be around. I let myself feel all the things. And I would do it the same every time. I've changed. I no longer want to numb, numb down all emotions. I was honestly really surprised at how much I could feel my emotions and how raw they were because I'm on mental health medication. I'm on antidepressants. I, I don't really cry. And there were times when I thought, oh my God, this medication is numbing me so much, but the alternative is also so bad, so we'll just keep taking it. But the emotions that came out of me the past few weeks have been so raw and deep. And in, I guess in a way it's reassured me that I still have deep emotions. It's just very few people who I love enough to break down this hard over. My family has always been the most important thing to me and that will always be that way. When you're grieving, everything feels not important. Your job feels not important. Being fun 
or talking about fun things feels insignificant. Everything feels insignificant. The funeral was the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. And I, I've never cried with such force before for such an extended period of time. But I am glad that the emotions are able to come out of me. And if you're struggling, perhaps to feel your emotions, uh, talking about it with someone who is going through the same thing is really helpful. So I would, I would talk with my family, especially my mom. Uh, listening to music about grief and loss has always been... Sometimes I would play songs on repeat and just sob to them. <laughs> that also helps you get in touch with your emotions. And you shouldn't feel guilty if, if you're feeling okay one day. It comes in waves. That doesn't mean that you're not grieving. I found it really hard to be around people who are not sharing my pain. I would go out and see friends, and sometimes it would help to distract myself. Sometimes it was helpful, and then other times I, I felt so weak and numb and just broken down that I barely had enough energy to stand. That's what I felt like. And I was like, I can't handle seeing someone and trying to have a conversation like I have energy, like like I can focus on anything. But then sometimes I would feel like I can barely walk and then I would still go out and see a friend and they would be able to distract me and we would talk about things and for an hour or two I would feel better. But after that hour or two I really needed to, I felt also exhausted like I had used up all my social energy that I had and now I just had to go back home and continue being exhausted from sadness. It's okay if you need a distraction sometimes. Sometimes there is no distracting you and it's just your sadness and you just need to curl up in your bed with the blinds down and listen to music or journal or or watch a movie. I would, I would watch movies and... I just I would just lay in bed and um, there's no timeline to feeling better with time I guess you get used to it I don't know I think it will always hurt it's just I'm starting to feel a bit more like myself again because when grief hits it, it felt like I was made of sadness and pain and grief and it was so much and I could barely carry it. And there was no place for me. It was just my love with nowhere to put it. My sadness from losing someone who I loved and loved very much. We would light candles. We would talk about memories. There was so much crying. And then after, after the funeral, it was still very hard. But I... I I guess in some way maybe it could help with closure, but I think I was also really afraid of the funeral and it really confronted me with the fact that he's gone and I didn't want to be confronted with that, but I had to be. Two weeks after the funeral that we went on vacation and it, I think it was nice to be away. This was a paid vacation. It was non-negotiable and um, me and my mom, we both needed it. We took it easy. And we did talk about him. We didn't pretend like the grief wasn't there. We, we talked about it. it. It was still there. We brought it with us. But it was nice to get new experiences. Interestingly, right before the vacation, I was working right up until that time. I had two days off around the funeral because I used up all my vacation days for the actual vacations where I would be out of the country. So I had no choice but to work. So right before the vacation... We both felt ill and it was really weird. Like it wasn't like the flu or the cold or something. It was like we had random pains in random places. Like I I had headaches and I had a pain in my ear and it was like a traveling pain so random. And I definitely think like the emotional pain and just all the emotional things were just taking a toll on the physical body and we just we, we just got ill. It was just... By the time we, we got to the point of vacation, we were so exhausted that we were just ill for the first three days. 
that happened. Um, then we came back from vacation. We had a couple days. I was running around. I had so many things to do. I was also not working, thankfully, but I had a lot of things to do. I got dumped at that time. Um, so that wasn't helping. It took my focus away from my grief for a bit, getting dumped, because that was a whole new emotion that was coming on top of all the emotions. But like getting dumped just like brought up all of the loss this past year. And it I was just like not not doing well for a while. And then we went on another vacation with my dad. And interestingly, that vacation, I felt like connected me with myself a bit again. Maybe it's because more time had passed by that time and I no longer had my relationship to worry about or worry about it going south because I was not able to prioritize my ex because I was so sad. In a way, I guess that was a weight off my shoulder and um, felt like I have I don't have any more things to worry about. Enough time had passed that I was starting to feel a bit more like myself again, like I was not, like I was maybe a bit more me and not just my sadness. Anyway, uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just time and um, traveling, like really intense traveling. And I wasn't sick this time around, so that was really helpful. And we just saw so many beautiful places. And I, and there were a couple moments where I felt like, oh my God, I feel like I can breathe again a bit more easily and it's weird to say that because I feel like I should still be really sad and I'm still grieving and I know it will come back in waves it almost feels bad to feel better (laughs) I don't know but I know he would want me to be happy and he always took everything life had to give so I feel like that's what he would want for me as well and I'm definitely not there yet but I'm starting to be at a point where um I feel like maybe I can hang out with my friends for more than a couple of hours. I am starting to think about how I can fill up my life again now that I don't have a relationship anymore and I'm single again. Uh, What things I can do that will bring me joy. I sat down to film these podcast episodes again, which is cool. Maybe that will go somewhere. That's where I'm at. I have no idea if any of this was useful in terms of other people's grief, but maybe you don't feel so alone after listening to this. Maybe there will be people around you who want you to be like your old self. Maybe you feel like they don't understand the gravity of your pain and they maybe you feel rushed to feel better. There is nothing wrong with feeling this much pain let yourself feel it that's the only way that it will get even a little bit better and don't ever feel bad for being a downer or anything like if you cancel plans you cancel plans if they're your true friends they will understand and if you have a relationship like I did and you're not prioritizing the relationship and the relationship ends when you're at the lowest point in your life then that that person was never worth your time anyway When you're grieving, your pain becomes the thing that that has an effect on everything. It feels like you're made of pain. (laughs) You know, and sometimes people have lost loved ones and they still don't understand that. That big that big the big pain. (laughs) If they can't have empathy for what you're going through, even if they can't relate, then I guess it was the test of the relationship. Because there was always gonna be hard times in life and if that person 